overall. Robert, what, what was your take? Were you surprised? Did you think that was you know, right on par? And, and does this augur well for the year ahead? What we're noticing is that, um, that property prices that, uh, from a lender's point of view, anything that's sub 500 price range, we're noticing they're starting to hold their own and in some areas they're starting to creep up. Anything over 500 has still got a bit more softening to go, we're, we're finding from our end. But, but overall, um, I think Michael's right. Uh, prospectively speaking, uh, property, we're, we're finding from our end anyway, as a result of the, the, uh, the forecast of interest rates now coming down, with the investors we're noticing that are starting to come back into the market, and also people that are renting are finding out that if I get in there and buy the property today, it's, I'm almost at a stage where actually I'm cash flow better off in purchasing the property instead of renting. So it's getting to the stage where anything sub 500s, we're noticing is starting to move, but they don't get recorded till the next quarter. So what you'll probably find is subsequent quarters, if you almost do a section of, of which property prices in which areas and what categories are really starting to be affected, what you'll find is anything, say for example, Sydney uh, sub 500 is actually starting to get a bit of momentum happening and we call that the ripple effect. So once you, once you notice that the properties under, under 500 start moving and the confidence starts coming back in, uh, first home buyers are starting to also come in because they've got that uh, 30th of June currently that deadline date they need to get in by to realise some of their benefits. Uh, what you'll probably find is that, that, that like Michael said, the 3.3%, relatively speaking, I think it's still starting to hold its own. Some very interesting points you raise, and throughout the program, uh, we'll, we'll go through each of them individually. I just want to pick up on one thing you said about uh, mm -hmm. there's still more softening to go in that plus 500 yeah. market, which well, you'd think would be Sydney, particularly Sydney and Perth yeah, and, and, depends, and Melbourne. Depends geographically what areas. Where some of the values that, that go out there, so we've got independent contract values that are on, on a lot of the bank panels. The feedback that we're getting from them is anything uh, to the top end, there's still a bit more softening to go, and anything in, in areas where uh, things like the, the holiday home market, there's still a little bit more softening to go there. So people are trying to realise some of their luxury items, so to speak, and are refocusing in on um, on their principal place of residence when they're at the top end. Mm. So the the toys of their their boats and yachts and things like that, they're starting to go on the market, and the, then the and where, where you've seen, say, coast, coastal areas like the Central Coast and, uh, and things like that, we're noticing that those properties uh, are staying on the market a little bit longer and there's some bargains to be had in that sort of range. Mm. So you'll probably find some of the investors that had the, like the, the, the price range that they started from, Michael, I'm sure you'll mm. understand where I'm coming from here, was a lower, lower price base. So they had a huge capital growth up in the northern end with all the resources and the demand for housing there. So there was a, there was a relatively large growth period when Sydney slowed down say three or four years ago, they kept on going for the next two or three years. So all we're doing is just seeing a slight correction there. So it's important that we put that into perspective, into perspective because... Exactly um, right. I am buying a one-room apartment tower along Spencer Street, Melbourne CBD. It's about 300,000. Uh, the first 19 floors of this tower is a hotel. My question is, will I have an advantage because the apartments are sitting above the hotel. Uh, compared with just buying another apart apartment tower, wholly uh, apartments. Does the uh, apartment tower have a, a car space? Yes, it has got a car space uh, and one room apartment I'm paying around 300,000 and it is on the 29th floor. What, what are rental yields like in... It's in, about $400 a week. How much? $400. So that's well and truly positive, positively geared. From a, from a lender's point of view, Jason, uh, some of the lenders look at, look at the amount of units in the building and they look at their exposure and what type of people would want to live in something like that. So what you'll probably find is unless you've got other collateral to put up as security or you've got, you're already with that particular lending institution, your deposit requirements might actually increase when you're buying into that type of development. So instead of going with your normal 5% or even 10%, they might ask for something along the lines of 20 or even 25%. 
go in a building like that. It, the same as if you're perhaps buying a studio apartment. That's correct. So what, with with a studio apartment, using that as an example, your market for you know the one or the two bedroom apartment say is that big. When you get to a studio, the market demand going forward, if anything was to go wrong and the lender had to sell that property, you're very limited to who would potentially buy that property. Primarily, it might, might be just for uh, you know like a. A, a CBD dweller, a single person, et cetera, et cetera. So what he'll probably find is you might, you might find your rate of return might be relatively good today, but from a lender's point of view, they're concerned with the volatility in the marketplace. When you're talking so many floors, 29th floors, there's quite a few units in that building. So lenders are going to look at their exposure in that building. They don't like to take too much on mm. from an exposure point of view. Right. So but what he needs to weigh up is... Because he's, he's getting $400 a week rental, so... It's a great rental for that, the value of the property. Depending on what his levies are, uh, 29 floors, a lot of lifts involved if there's gyms and spas and that sort of thing. Indeed. When he buys units like that, he'll find his levies and administrative costs sometimes can be relatively high. That's some, that sometimes can offset up to $100 a week in his rental. So from a lender's point of view, that'll get taken into consideration so might also. Positively geared Today, uh, on face value, yeah, indeed, but when but he looks at his levies, that might offset that. So it's just something to consider. It and is I agree with what Mike fire. was saying, <laughs> that um, his best capital growth generally is on land. So if he can try and get something, whether it's some land content, he'll find long term, that might be a better proposition if mm. he can.